What's up everyone, David from DoD Media. Today I'm going to be showing you an awesome transition in Premiere Pro, which is a kind of glitch RGB swipe thing, like this. It's super simple, you don't need any external effects, it's all native effects in Premiere Pro, so let's jump right in. Okay, so within Premiere Pro, I've got this clip loaded up, which is the export that I made as a promo video for Vedran, who's a DJ, and it's just a short promo, a few shots of him mixing. So what we're going to do is select this shot here. Weed has <laughs> okay, we're going to cut there, and then we're going to select a different shot. Let's take him pressing a button. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's get rid of this middle one and just join them together. That way it plays. Okay, we're just gonna ignore the music for now. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna delete the music track. That way it's not gonna bother us. All right, so these two tracks, I'm gonna change their color just so that I can see them a little better. I'm gonna make them mango. Okay, actually I'm gonna drop this down because I don't need the previews anymore. Uh, it's easier to see it that way. So, straight off the bat, what I'm going to do is send these to a nest. Okay? Uh, you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it as nested sequence 5. That's, that's fine. You're going to double click on the nest. You're going to select the two clips. You're going to hold Alt. And you're going to click and drag up once. And then click and drag up once again. Okay, then you're going to select the bottom clip. Come over to Effects. Type in Channel. Whoop, channel. Choose channel mixer, dump channel mixer on there, effect controls, come down. We're going to want the base layer to be green, let's say. So let's get rid of the red and let's get rid of the blue. All right, let's change the blending mode to screen. Okay, now copy this layer by hitting Control or Command C and then hit Control or Command Alt and V and it's going to bring up your paste attributes. You can also get this by right-clicking and choosing paste attributes. We're going to remove motion because we don't care about motion. We're going to click opacity and effects. That way that layer is going to have that green channel on it as well. Okay, next we're going to select all four of these and do the same thing. So we're going to paste the attributes. Bam. Now it's all green. There's a reason for that. It's because we've set everything to green. So the middle layer, we're going to go ahead and turn this blue. So we're going to remove the green. We're going to come down to where it says blue, blue, and type 100. Same thing on the other layer that's on that same track, blue, blue, 100, okay. And the top one we're going to make red. So you're going to hit zero on green, green, and type in 100 on red. And same thing for this one, red, red. Perfect. Now you're blending your RGB, your red, blue, green, uh, using screen, you're blending them all so that it looks as it should. It has its original colors. Now we have a little bit of fun. So we're going to trace back 10 frames. So you can either hold shift and the left arrow and it'll jump back five and then another five. Or you can just move back 10 frames. You do whatever you want. Make sure these are all selected and then hit control or command K and it's going to slice those. K and then jump forward 10 frames the other side and hit control or command K to slice those as well. All right, now we're going to change the color of these just because it helps us not get confused. So we'll make them lavender. Great. The area that we're going to be affecting is this mango area. So what we want to do is go forward five frames, slice, okay, and then five frames into the other shot and slice again. Then we want to go two frames into this other shot and two frames back from this transition here. I'm going to put a marker just so it's clear that that's where the transition is. Now this part, we're going to call it phase one of the transition and there's going to be three phases. So it's in terms of RGB shifts, there's going to be mild, medium and heavy RGB shifting. Okay. So this phase, we're going to shift these up. So 960, we're going to bring that up to a thousand. And then the second layer below it, we're going to bring it down to 900 or whatever balances. That looks good. 910. There we go. We're going to do the same thing over here because this is also phase one. It's the end of the transition as opposed to the beginning. So we're going to bring this up to a thousand and we're going to drop layer two down to 910. Okay. 
then we can begin phase two. Phase two, let's change the color of this to uh, I don't know, forest. Okay, phase two is forest. So again, we're gonna bring this up, but instead we're gonna double it. So instead of going to a thousand, we're gonna go to 1060. Okay, and then this one we're gonna drop down to, to 850. Okay, same thing over here, 850. Perfect, this is looking like a really nice old school 3D kind of setup. Right, and now the final ones, we're, let's just change the color of these as well, just for clarity's sake, we'll make them teal. Okay, and now this one, we're just gonna go absolutely nuts. We're gonna put it at say 750 and let's make that 1100. I'm not really respecting any kind of division here. I'm just literally making it go a little bit crazy. All right, and then this one again, same thing, just shift it to whatever you want. It doesn't have to be even, it can be completely random. All right, and now if we play this back, you get this crazy kind of starts shifting, really shifts, and then it mellows back in to the original shot. Perfect. Hit save and head back to your main sequence. Now if you play this back, you'll see that all of your nested changes are there. Great, and the marker is included as well, which is really handy because now what we can do is actually apply the swipe transition to this. So what you're gonna need is two adjustment layers. Now again, head back 10 frames, trim the adjustment layer to those 10 frames, and then jump forward 10 frames and cut that. Then just drag the excess up and put it right on top and cut it again and get rid of the tail. That way you have two superimposed adjustment layers with nothing on them, so there's no adjustment being made at the moment. Perfect. Okay, the bottom layer, we're gonna come up to effects and we're gonna type replicate. We're gonna try and type replicate. There we go, replicate. Okay, we're gonna replicate three times so that you see a grid of nine. That's perfect. All right, that's all we need to do on that adjustment layer. The second one, what we're gonna do is add the transform layer, or effect, I should say, sorry. So just drag it down, it's in distort, transform, plop it on there, perfect. Now, a few things we can do straight away to make it look better. Scale, first of all, we're gonna to set to 300 because we want this to fill the full layer of one of those nine squares that's on the lower adjustment there. So we're gonna set it to 300. Shutter angle, we wanna use 90, or, I mean, to be honest, anything that's in that area. This is essentially gonna be our motion blur as it swipes towards the right. All right, then next up, hit that position keyframe, come over to the end of the transition, and hit that keyframe again. Now, if we head back to the first one, what we can do is just zoom out a little bit and we'll see that actually we're centered in on the first square there. So go back to 300 and just drag this along towards the right so that the value is increasing, which means that your actual frame will shift towards the left of that grid view, okay? And depending on what size of footage you're dealing with, this number is going to vary but as long as it's roughly um, you know, centered on that left frame, it'll be fine because uh, it's gonna be moving. You're not gonna notice that it's not centered on that left frame, on that left frame. Okay, then head over to that other keyframe. And actually I see that that keyframe is right on the end of the layer. So we're not gonna be able to see the changes that we're making. So just drag it back one layer and there we go. Perfect. Now what you wanna do is drag it towards the right instead of the left. Or I should say, drag your mouse towards the left and it'll make the frame go towards the right. You get what I mean. Okay, and now if we play this back, it swipes along like that and that looks a little bit crap, but that's fine. That's, that's the basis of it now. We wanna uncheck use composition's shutter angle because actually that's just, it's not gonna give us any decent motion blur. And now why is it putting itself in the middle, that's very odd. So let's just adjust that anchor point so that it is framing the clips correctly. Now if it plays, it's a constant movement, right? That's, that's fine if that's what you want, but it looks a little bit naff, I think. So we're gonna select those two keyframes. We're gonna come to temporal interpolation and we're gonna choose Bezier mode. 
Now if we drop down this uh, arrow, you'll see that there's some handles there. And what we want to do is actually make these kind of shoot out at a very low velocity and then come back in at a very low velocity. And that will give us a very kind of natural ease in, ease out movement. I'm just going to shift this along because I think I've actually messed up where it's meant to be. There we go, that's a bit better. So now if we hit play, woo, fun. Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit more shutter angle to this. I'll make it, yeah, I'll make it 180. There we go, that gives us a bit of a better blur. Now I'm actually going to go back into the nest and just reduce the effect a little bit on here because I think it's it's a little bit too much. There's not enough motion blur to, to hide the fact that it's, you know, moving. And so the RGB shift looks a little bit weird and out of place. So I'm just going to bring this down just a little bit, uh, feather it down as it were, or just reduce the actual strength of the effect just on the first phase, not on any of the other phases. Okay, now let's see how this plays. Woo, looks good. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. And obviously, these keyframes dictate how quickly that transition happens. So if you want to make it faster, you just reduce the distance between these keyframes, but use the middle as the bearing point for that distance. Don't just bring this one closer to that one, because otherwise your transition is going to happen here instead of in the middle where the cut is. And there you go, that's how you do an RGB swipe in Premiere Pro. All right, I hope you found this video useful. I hope you apply it to your workflow, and I hope you get some awesome transitions in Premiere Pro using this trick. Hit that thumbs up button if you liked what you saw repeatedly, like on and off and on and off, because that'll help me get higher in YouTube rankings. Don't know what I'm doing with my hand. Hit subscribe if you want to get more videos from me at DoD Media. Leave an example in the comments section of how you've used this transition, and you might win something free from my store. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Shh.